All right, guys, today we're doing 6-6, six, six, which is trapezoids and kites. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. The parallel sides are called bases of a trapezoid. The non-parallel sides are called legs of a trapezoid. The base angles of a trapezoid are formed by the base and one of the legs. In trapezoid A, B, C, D, angle A and angle B are one pair of the base angles, and angle C and angle D are the other pair. If the legs of a trapezoid are congruent, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. The mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs of the trapezoid. A mid-segment of a trapezoid can also be called the median. A kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Unlike a parallelogram, the opposite sides of a kite are not congruent or parallel. So isosceles trapezoid, if a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of those base angles, uh, or each pair of base angles is congruent. If a trapezoid has one pair of congruent base angles, then it is an isosceles trapezoid. A trapezoid is isosceles if and only if its diagonals are congruent. And then it says isosceles trapezoids, the base angles of a trapezoid can are only congruent if the trapezoid is isosceles. It's not all the time. Recall that the symbol with the two lines and a cross through it means that they are not parallel to. And then the mid-segment theorem, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to each base and it is, its measure is one half of the sum of the lengths of the bases. So it's BE for this one, it's BE equals one half AF plus CD. Another way to write it, I write it, the mid-segment is equal to one half base one plus base two. Just another way to write it. Kites, if a quadrilateral is a kite, then its diagonals are perpendicular. And then if a quadrilateral is a kite, then exactly one pair of opposite angles is congruent. So let's jump into some of these examples. All right, check our understanding here. So if angle, we're trying to find a measure of angle D. If angle C is 101 and we have these marked parallel, these are congruent, then this is going to be that same side or same angle. So angle D is also going to be 101. Look at this figure here. We have WT is what we're trying to find. They give us this whole segment right here is 20. And then this little guy right here to here to here is only 15. Because these are marked congruent and these are marked parallel, these diagonals will be congruent. So since TY is only 15 and this whole is 20, well, we're missing five to make that whole 20. So WT is five. Trying to find A, B, and this is a kite. So since this is a kite, we know that all these are 90 degree angles here. So this makes this a right triangle. So we can just do the Pythagorean theorem. So four squared plus three squared equals C squared. Four squared is 16, three squared is nine equals C squared. 16 plus nine is 25 equals C squared. Square root both sides, five will equal C. So A, B is five. Finding the angle C. So when this kite is marked this way, we know that the two opposite angles, these are the two opposite angles that will be congruent. So we know this side is also 85. So we're just gonna do 360 minus 120 minus 85 minus 85 to get our angle C. So we do that angle C equals 70. Boom. Okay. Now we got some gra graphing couple here. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D has vertices at negative four, one, or negative one, two, negative two, three, 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 and five, negative one. Verify that A, B, C, D is a trapezoid. So we got to graph that first. So negative four, negative one is A. B is at negative two, three. C is at three, three. And D is at five, negative one. So let's go ahead and make our little trapezoid here. All right. So first we just need to see if this is a trapezoid. And here's what we're gonna do. We know that these have to be parallel, okay? And they have to have the same slope. And they are, they are parallel because they're both, the slope is zero. So BC is parallel to AD. D, not C. And then we need to double check that these are not parallel. And in fact, we want them to be the opposites. They don't have, they don't have to be the opposites, but we would like them to be. 
So when we do that, we're gonna find the slope, one, two, three, four, one, two. So that slope would be M of AB would equal two. CDs would be one, two, three, four, one, two, which would be negative two. So they are opposites. They're, well, they're not the same, so they're not parallel. So AB is not parallel to CD. So therefore, this is a trapezoid. Is a trapezoid. And then determine whether ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid and explain. Well, since we already proved it's a trapezoid, all we need to do is make sure, find the distance of A, B, and C, D. And if they're the same, then they are going to be, it is going to be a isosceles trapezoid. So we just use the distance formula. So A, B, find the distance of that. We will have negative 4 minus negative 2 squared plus negative 1 minus 3 squared. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So negative 2 squared is 4 plus negative 4 squared is positive 16. So that's going to be the square root of 20. We just leave it like that because now we're going to do CD. We need CD to be the square root of 20. If it's not, then this is not an isosceles trapezoid. So 3 minus 5 squared plus 3 minus negative 1 squared. We're going to have negative 2 squared, which is just 4, plus 3 minus a negative 1, which is 3 plus 1. So 4 squared is 16. It gives us the square root of 20. So yes, this is because AB equals CD. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. We're not going to do number 10 because this is for the wrong problem. I actually put that in there wrong. So we're not doing that one. We're doing the other three. So in the figure, YZ is the mid-segment of trapezoid TWRV and determine the value of X. So all of these we're using the midpoint or mid-segment. And that is that mid-segment formula again. I'll write it over here. Mid-segment equals one half. Base 1 plus base 2. It doesn't matter which one you pick to be base 1 or base 2 because we're just adding them together. So for number 7, what you got to do, we're trying to find the mid segment, or we're trying to find X. Well, X is for base 1 or 2. So we're going to have 8 as our mid segment equals 1 half. I did 14.8 plus X. Well, so we're just going to distribute that 1 half. Half of 14.8 is 7.4, <clears throat> and then half of x is just one half x. I'm going to subtract 7.4. So I get 0 0.6 equals one half x. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, and I get 1.2 equals x for number 7. All right, so still using this figure for the next two. If VR equals 2X, so now it equals 2X, YZ equals 20, and TW equals 6X. All right, we're using the same formula. So we're going to have 20 equals 1 half of 2X plus 6X. 2X plus 6X is 8X. So 20 equals 1 half 8X. Distribute the one half. So we'll do one half of 8x is 4x. Divide by 4. x equals 5. So then again, now this one, dr is 2x plus 2. tw is 5x plus 3. And yz equals 13. We're not trying to find ts, we're trying to find tw. All right, then doing the same formula. So we'll have 13 equals 1 half 2x plus 2 plus 5x plus 3. Do the parentheses first. So we'll have 13 equals 1 half 
of 7x plus 5. We'll distribute that one half. So I'll have 13 equals 3.5x plus 2.5. Subtract the 2.5. So I'll have um, 11 and a half, or 10 and a half, not 11 and a half, 10 and a half equals 3 and a half x. Divide by 3 and a half. So x is going to equal 3. And we need to find TW. So we're plugging it back in for the 5x plus 3. So TW equals 5 times 3 plus 3. So that'll be 15 plus 3, which is 18. And that's all for 6.6. Six.